What's great about teaching is, is if you want to learn a topic real well, just learn how to teach it because when you constantly have students coming to you and asking you questions on every topic imaginable, every website or app imaginable, you, you have to sometimes go out and research things and learn them better. Real Estate Investing Profits presents Profit Masters with your host, world-renowned real estate coach and investor, Corey Boatwright. Now, strap in and get ready to learn elite wealth-building investment strategies taught by six- and seven-figure house-flipping masters as they reveal their best real estate investing profit secrets to you right now. What is going on, potty people? Hey, this is Corey Boatwright. I am your founder for Real Estate Investing Profits and the host of Real Estate Investing Profit Master podcast series. And I hope you're having a phenomenal, fun, productive day. Right? I've said that a couple of times. And I mean it because if you take one of those away, then it will not be as fulfilling. So make sure that you incorporate all three. What we are going to do today is talk to Mr. Lex Levingrad. All right. So Lex is somebody that has his own coaching program. He has a book that is out right now. He's going to give you access to here at the end of the show. Make sure you check out the show notes and we'll have that in there and the links in there. Plus, I also want you to check out his boat. He actually sent me a picture of his yacht and uh, you'll have to check this thing out. It is pretty cool, man, if you're into boats. It is really nice. Lex is out there in Boca Raton, Florida, Florida. And he is also doing wholesale deals. He's also doing rehab deals. And not just a few. I'm talking about 15, 20 deals a month. And he has students that help him uh, with some of these transactions. And I think you're going to find it pretty interesting on how he sets up his business in order to win. So I think you're going to really enjoy this interview. Make sure that you text the word PROFIT to 38470. That's PROFIT to 38470 to get your down and dirty ultimate real estate investing quick start guide. Make sure you do it. It'll be automatically text right back to you. We call it automatically text right back to you. Okay. So I also want to remind you that you can go to Corey'sCoaching.com or simply go to RealEstateInvestingProfits.com forward slash coaching application, and we will have a discussion together to see if you are a good fit on our coaching program. We have some incredible students that have really had some phenomenal success. I want to show you some of their stories. Uh, simply go over to Corey'sCoaching.com. I have a video I recorded that will give us a good idea of kind of where you are right now as an investor. And I'd love to talk with you more about coaching because coaching will help get you to where you want to go faster. There is no other way that I know of to help you achieve things quicker, open up doors, really increase what Tony Robbins calls the proximity, right? So increasing your proximity on who you are spending time with and doing deals with and, and getting uh, mentorship and coaching from, it really has a profound effect on uh, the overall success of your business. So make sure you check that out. All right. So here you go. Here is Mr. Lex Levinrad. Lex, my man, are you there? I'm here. How's it going, Corey? How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well, man. So tell me, you're calling in from Florida? I am. I'm in Boca Raton, Florida. Boca Raton, Florida. How long, are you, how long have you lived out there? I've lived here since 2003, so about 14 years, pretty much ever since I started in real estate. Wow. Wow, that is a long time. So uh, I'm. it's interesting because I see you, you know, all over the internet. You, there's people that have mentioned you doing certain things uh, with them on kind of the, how you have your model set up, which I'm fascinated uh, by. I am, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of leverage and I know that you're uh, doing that in a big way and in creating a huge, basically buyer's list on steroids and having control <laughs> of that thing. And I love it. Um, but why don't uh, you go ahead and just talk about who you are and what kind of 
uh, area that you are expert at in real estate right now? Okay. Uh, well, basically, I wholesale and I fix and flip and I have rentals. I wasn't always that way. I started actually being a landlord for the first few years. Uh, just bought houses, fixed them up, rented them out, refinanced, and just kept on doing that until 2006. And then when the market changed uh, was when I started getting into fixing and flipping. And from there, I moved into wholesaling. And pretty much once I got tired of paying the spreads to all the wholesalers and all the houses they were selling to me. <laughs> um, you know, so evolved from landlording to fixing, flipping, wholesaling. Uh, now we do all three. We uh, have rentals in seven counties. I do some, you know, 13. Right now I'm working on 13 rehabs and we wholesale around 15, 20 houses a month. So we do all, pretty much all, all of them. That's great. Now, do you have a team that's uh, set up on, on it I right do. Now? I do. I have five people in the office. I have six rehab crews. I typically give two houses per crew to rehab. Uh, try to get them in and out within three to five weeks. Uh, on the wholesale side, I don't touch the houses. Uh, I have students that submit deals to us. Uh, staff in our office puts them up on the sites, on the blogs, on the app, on the Deal Blast. They get emailed out three times a week. Um, I don't speak to buyers, really. Most of the houses are just sold inside the office. Some of the better buyers that are buying a lot of houses will, will just go ahead and text me directly. But those guys are typically buying 30, 40 houses a year from us. A lot of the buyers, I, I, you know, I don't see the house. I don't speak to the seller. I don't speak to the buyer. I prefer it that way. <laughs> yeah, I love it, man. I love that model. Again, I mean, obviously an expert on leverage. What made you want to get involved with real estate investing? Uh, you know, I was looking for more financial freedom. And, uh, you know, I used to be a stockbroker. And in 2000, the market crashed, uh, pretty much lost everything. Looking for something else, a better way to live your life. You know, I went to school. I got a finance degree. Uh, Worked hard. I did everything I was supposed to do. And then suddenly here I was in my early 30s and starting over again. So I wanted to make sure that that didn't happen again. And I started looking into ways that I could create a better future for myself. And real estate definitely was something that kept coming up as a repetitive uh, topic. And so I decided to explore that more. That's awesome, man. So uh, you were a I was a day trader for a little while. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So it was uh, probably eight months of uh, just a lot of getting up very, very early in the morning. I would short blue chip stocks, oh, uh, wow. which, is, okay. which is, which is a lot of fun. It's kind of one of the first ways to get involved with like the short sales idea of, sure. uh, with real estate. And, uh, it started with, with stocks <laughs> yeah. like Microsoft and the big stocks. But yeah. what, what, um, what was interesting about that is that you had to get up so early and, you know, it was also one of those things where you, you had to listen, you had to watch, I had three screens. So I had, you know, the charts and, and I was watching the candlesticks and then I'd, I'd have my news uh -huh. and then, you know, then you have your trades uh -huh. and it was, uh, it was, I wasn't very good on my stops. <laughs> so <laughs> I'd see the stock go down. I'd be like, Oh, just wait just a little bit longer, 50 cents or 25 cents. And, uh, yeah. you know, so, but it is one of those games where you have to, you have to really be disciplined at it. Now, what got you involved from, you know, moving from stocks into real estate? What, what was the trend transition point? Well, you know, for me, it was like it was actually a low point in my life because when the stock brokerage business kind of blew up in March of 2000, I was essentially unemployed and I was unemployed for a while, for about a year. And I was just looking for something new to do. And I was pretty much unemployable because I'd been self-employed already for almost eight, nine years. And um, I was looking at franchises, anything I could get involved with. And I saw this uh, late night infomercial. A uh, guy named uh, Colton Sheets, he had this program. It was called No Money Down. And what was so appealing about that is I didn't have any money. So I was like, this is perfect. <laughs> it's just for me. So that was what I did. I, I, I actually ordered his program on a credit card and uh, got it shipped to me. I read the thing front to back. And I was fascinated with it. It sounded like there was there was some legs there, that there was something that I could do with that. So Carlton Sheets was one of your big influences? Definitely, definitely one of my big influences. I mean, there's been a lot of a lot of influences along the way. You know, I'd say that that was, I, I, I don't know so much an influence, but more just the person who first pointed me in the right direction. Sure. Uh, you know, and then from there, uh, as far as influences go, um, you know, I, I, I was at some of the early Robert Allen boot camps and, uh, you know, you're talking out in Los Angeles in the, uh, uh, you know, a, a pretty, pretty long time ago. And um, from there, uh, Think and Grow Rich, uh, rich dad, poor dad, you know, it was a, it, it was a progression, but it all seemed to be pointing to the same thing. And that was that real estate 
was the only way that I could potentially create a better life for myself for the future, not necessarily today, but for the future. And that's what really attracted me to it. That's great. So, Mm -hmm. so you had like that breaking point was this basically whenever the stock market just basically crashed and then you had to figure out a way to kind of levy into something, something else. And it's funny because I remember, wasn't Carlton Sheets from Florida? He is, yeah. He's actually just up the street. He's in Stewart, Florida. And uh, yeah, yeah. Have you ever met him? I have not met him personally, but I have friends in the industry that have met him. And he's actually called in on some of my uh, ads that I've had. Um, <laughs> but but great. yeah, he was, you know, he was, he was one of the, the first initial guys that opened my eyes up to the possibilities of real estate. Yeah, I, I bought his course too. You know, no no money mm-hmm. down, little ads in the paper. Yeah, he was uh, okay. he was great. So what yeah. we talk about on here is one of the things called we call the profit master investing strategy, Lex. And if you listen to some of the episodes, then basically what it is is I want to find out what it is, and our listeners ask this specifically: what's working well in your business right now that is impacted the bottom line. Uh, the most, maybe one of your best strategies that you could share for making the biggest impact, the biggest profits in your business right now? Well, I would say that, uh, do you, do you want to specifically with regards to fix and flips or wholesaling? It doesn't matter. Just whatever you want to talk about that's specific so I would for say, a strategy. Okay. So I would say that as far as wholesaling is concerned, I see a lot of people out there, they're all, everybody who gets into real estate is fascinated by wholesaling, wants to start out. And I, and I get the appeal because if you don't have money, it's a fantastic place to start out. And that's where most people do start out, myself included. But once people get a house under contract, they want to sell it. I, I find too many people out there are very weak on the online side, in other words, the social networking, the marketing. And and really, that is where all of the action is because uh, you could you could buy 100 houses a, a week, but if you can't dispose of them, if you can't sell them to someone, then you don't really have a business. So I would uh, tell people that I think that the, 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 the one area to really focus on is on that area because if you can get good at that, then you can really increase your profits substantially. If you can know with confidence you can move more inventory, then you can buy with confidence more inventory. Sure, sure. Sure. So what is the best way that you know of to build that buyer's list? Well, what's worked really well for us is, uh, you know, we have what we call uh, brute force marketing, which is basically, you know, way back when we read a lot of the Jay Conrad uh, Levinson books on guerrilla marketing and basically how to market if you don't have a $20,000 a month budget. It's great when your business is at the point where you do have that. But when you start out, you don't have that. So so how do you market? And really, the only way you can do that is what I call with just like brute force. You can go and you can take listings and you can post them on your blog and you can post them on Craigslist and you can post them on eBay classifieds and all these different places. And yeah, it's time consuming. But if you just keep doing that every day on 20, 30 properties, then it's just a question of time before your phone's going to start ringing. If you have that conversation and you get their info and you understand what they're looking for, right. then all you have to do is go out there and find that product for them. And once you sell that first house to them and you build that relationship, then moving forward, there's not a lot of effort that's involved because they're okay just seeing the email. If they see something they like, they email, they call, right. and boom, sell them that second and that third and that fourth and that fifth house. So, um, you know, so those dummy ads, whether it's dummy ads on eBay or whether it's on Craigslist or whether it's on your website or your um, blog uh, or even a bandit sign, it doesn't really matter. But but have something out there that's going to catch the eye of your typical cash buy investor. So like really try and understand who that cash buyer is, how they think, what they're looking for. And the more you can understand what they're looking for, the easier it'll be for you to find something for them. Yeah, I love that. So basically, you start uh, creating a grocery list, if you will. And we teach also um, students to do this. Is it's create a buyer's list first. So it's like shopping at that point. Um, yeah. So you know, so that that's one of the things that's that's crucial. Is it's so much f- faster, right, and easier to get rid of those wholesale properties when you already have somebody ready, willing, and waiting. Um, Correct. To 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 get one of those properties. So. And one specific way that you found to build that buyer's list is what? What's what's a what's a 
uh, kind of source that you found to build? Did you on Craigslist? Do you where do you find well, some we, of these buyers? So when we started out in the beginning, it was primarily Craigslist and driving traffic to our blog. Mm. Then after that, when we got to a certain threshold of probably north of about eight or ten thousand buyers, then we started implementing pay per click campaigns, and we found that. Although it was expensive, and, and it's a lot more expensive today than it was, let's say, seven or eight years ago, uh, although it's expensive, what you really have to look at is if you can sell a house for ten or $15,000 profit, is it, is it really expensive to pay $10 for that lead? And the answer is no. If the lead is legitimate, if it's a real buyer who's really going to buy, then that's not expensive. Right. So it's kind of like looking at the short term versus the long term. You know, short term, you spend a lot of money, you don't have – anything. But if you've got good product and you've got real buyers and you can keep them in your database and sell to them again and again and again, then, you know, every time you sell them a house, it just bring that, that cost of lead comes down. I agree. Yeah. I'm, I'm taking some, I'm, I'm also, uh, we're going to put this in the show notes as, as well. So okay. if you're, you know, not taking yeah. notes, you're listening, don't worry about it. We have them in the show notes, uh, and just make sure you're on the list. We'll, we'll send you the link to it, but that's good. And you know, another thing I think is, uh, interesting on how you okay. do things that is that's different that I see other other folks is you build this big um kind of like network if you will of of buyers and so you post that and you blast that out can you talk about how you develop that buyer network and do you call that network something is that just on your website right now is that where people just know to to go to find deals that are posted from other wholesalers or is that all your deals or how's that look exactly Okay, so basically, you know, it's kind of funny because we we didn't start out with the end in mind. I recommend always people start out with the end in mind, but we didn't. So what we did is we just did that brute force kind of marketing where we said, okay, you know, we got great deals for buyers and we'd put up all these websites. And we'd, we'd, we'd have, you know, a bunch of different domains with very similar wording to try and get as many websites out there with these capture pages for the buyers. So then when we spent all that money building up the buyers – then we said, wow, we don't have any deals. We've got to get more deals for these buyers. So then we ran out and said, well, how can we get more deals? So along the way, about four or five years into it, we figured out that it would be great if we could train people to go out there and be deal finders. So initially, the first four or five people that we trained, we put them out and hired them as employees. But we found that it wasn't very beneficial because they wouldn't stay very long or they wouldn't be necessarily proficient. And that's how we kind of streamlined it into coming up with this idea where we could get bird dogs out there, submit deals to us. So I'd say nowadays we probably about 40% uh, of the deals are ours in-house and the balance of the deals are either students or other wholesalers. So we're putting deals out for a lot of people, uh, letting them tap into that network of buyers. That's great. That's great. And and now you're becoming the authority for where people go to find these great deals. And how do you make sure that you get paid if it's not your deal? OK, so that's a very good question. And once again, you know, over you know, for the first few years, we, we had so many deals that went wrong where we didn't get paid. So we structured it. Basically, what we do is we have uh, the contracts go out in land trusts and we make the student be the trustee of the land trust. Interesting. And then we make the beneficiary of the land trust us and the student. So that way they have the authority to sign all the documents, the purchase contract, even the closing documents. And then we just go ahead and fund their deal. But now we know because we're funding the deal and we're dealing with a title company, we know we're going to get paid. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Well, that's mm -hmm. great. So land trusts are still something prevalently used all, all the time in, uh, in Florida. <laughs> We use it on every single deal and not just in Florida. It works on any deal anywhere. We have students from all over. Uh, uh, our best student is Biloxi, Mississippi, and we got a student just yesterday who flipped a deal in Missouri. Uh, you know, so, I mean, it works anywhere. Uh, uh, land trust is just great because it gives you so much more flexibility. You know, if, if, if something comes up, if you, if you buy something for 100 and you want to flip it for 110 and your best buyer says, I'll give you 104 and you don't want to pay double closing costs, well, land trust gives you the ability to assign the trust instead of having to pay those fees. Right. Um, you know, and some of our best buyers, like we've got some guys who will just say, hey, I'll buy anything you got, but you're not making more than five grand. And we'll say, okay, deal. And then we'll actually show them our buy and they'll just pay us the fee. So that way um, they don't feel like they, you know, uh, getting ripped off. And we feel like we're making a fair profit. And if a guy's going to buy 40 houses a year, hey, we're, we're happy with the five. So, so sometimes you do assignments. And sometimes, Correct. but other times, whenever you, instead of double closing, double escrow, 
um, where there's just two purchase agreements. You do it all in through a land trust. We do it all through a land trust, and then we can just assign the land trust. So instead of having to deal with like an assignment or contract, we just assign the land trust for a fee, and then the buyer just steps in, and we actually put our, our fee on the HUD. Interesting. Wow. So you put the fee on so, – so the new buyer actually does see that fee? Yeah, because the buyer is, is a guy who's like a professional rehabber who's buying maybe 40 houses a year from us. So he knows that we make a profit. He, he knows exactly. We actually disclose it on, our, on every deal that we sell. Our addendum says, I'm aware that this is a double close and flip and that you're going to record one deed before the other. So it's not like we're – people don't know. They, they, they know they're buying deals from us. Uh, our best buyers – are the guys that are professional rehabbers who fix and flip houses for a living. And sure. that way they just repeat. You know, they're, they're buying all the time. Those are our best buyers. We have a lot of one-off buyers, guys that will come in and buy a deal here and there. But um, by and large, the profit will be a lot larger on those people. But they won't do the volume like the professional guys will do. The professional guys that are doing this for a living will not let us make as much of a profit, but they'll do a lot more volume. Is there is there a con- concern, right, that once they see how much money you're making on the HUD, that the next time that they buy a property from you, they know that you made 10000 8000 whatever number, and they're going to be, you know, negotiating you because they know you have that kind of spread in there. Have you ever ever had that come We up have. I mean, sometimes you will have buyers like that, but by and large, those buyers that are the professional buyers are not doing that because these guys are making so much money. I mean, some of these guys that are rehabbing, you know, uh, 50, 60, 80 houses a year are making 30,000 profit per house. They're making so much money that they, they need us to give them inventory. So the last thing they want to do is, you know, negotiate it down to the point where it's not worthwhile for us to sell to them and then move on to another buyer. So, so it's, it's a delicate balance between keeping the buyer happy and us making sufficient profit. I always like to give the buyer the last word. So, if I'm asking uh, 95000 he says, can you do 945 Instead of saying, how about go down the middle, I'll just say, sure. So he feels like he won that negotiation, and he'll come back to buy again and again. Gotcha. Okay, so I would think somebody listening are going, okay, so I understand doing the land trust um, to get around the fees, but they still disclose how much money that you're making on the profit side, even doing the land trust. Is that what I hear you saying? Most of the time, yes. Okay. Most of the time. But the vast majority of our deals are not assignments. The vast majority, 90% plus of our deals are double close. We double just pay. Close. You know, I'd, I'd rather personally pay the extra closing fee and not have to deal with them seeing the spread. Right. But if I have a big buyer who buys a lot from me and, and he knows what we mark our deals up at, then sometimes for purposes of him getting a, a property of a cheaper price, we can cut out that second closing cost and just assign that. Land trust. Gotcha. Okay, that's interesting. I used to do a lot of land trust when I was doing short sales, and I mean that's mm-hmm. what we did all of them through land trust, and then I went to the option agreement, um, and and you know that was that was pretty big, and then we went back to purchase agreements, uh, and then I just basically mm-hmm. stopped doing short sales uh, because it, mm-hmm. there's so much red tape. But it's very interesting to see that you're still uh, doing the land trust um, and through 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 wholesaling. So yeah, that is uh, that's really interesting. What what's one of your biggest real estate challenges that you've had to face, Lex, and how'd you get through it? Well, I'd say for me the biggest challenge is you know uh, the 2006 2007 when the market came down because at the time I was essentially a landlord with all these rental properties and I was faced with. Uh, rising repairs, uh, maintenance, vacancies, insurance, taxes, and uh, no ability to refinance on the back end because uh, prior to that, the banks would just finance anything. So I'd buy something uh, with borrowed money from investors. I'd fix it up. I'd rent it out and I'd refinance it within six months. But suddenly, the refinance option on the back end didn't work. And at the time, I was borrowing from investors at 10% Mm -hmm. with uh, 36 months. Sure. So I said to myself, okay, how am I going to pay these people back at the end of the three years? Right. And that was when I realized that I needed to get a, an additional cash flow. So you did uh, that going. from a short term uh, standpoint, right? For the three years, then you were just going to refi and 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 onto a higher AM and and get them get them get you cashed out. 
Well, as long as I could refi, I didn't have to worry about paying them back and I didn't have to worry about pulling my cash back. But the minute I couldn't refi, I had two problems. Sure. A, I couldn't pull cash back, which means that I'd be cash, uh, you know, getting tighter and tighter on cash. And B, how was I going to pay them their money back when that three years came up? Right. And the banks weren't lending. One, you know, we had no way of knowing whether the banks would or wouldn't lend. And clearly they didn't because, you know, here we are all those years later. So I realized I had to have another income stream coming in to be able to service that debt because if a property had a situation where it was vacant or the repairs or the maintenance or whatever, that, that was what essentially got me into uh, fixing and flipping. And ultimately with fixing and flipping, I couldn't take on every flip, which is what got me into wholesaling. You know, I started out by calling my buddy and saying, hey, I've got a deal for you if you want it. And then after a while, I was like, you know, I should probably make a little bit of money on this. And that's how I moved into the wholesaling. I got gotcha. you. Okay. That's yeah. interesting. Okay. So uh, what's one of the big lessons that you've learned as you've kind of done this whole real estate investing game? And how did you kind of what is has how's it helped you get to where you are today? I would say for me, uh, I think really persistence has been, uh, you know, uh, two things. I think the first thing would be not listening to others and and having your own conviction to follow what you think and what you believe, regardless of whether it's right or whether it's wrong. I, I think sometimes making a, even a bad decision is is better than making no decision. So. When I saw the market in uh, you know the end of 2008, and I saw houses that were selling for $35,000 that used to sell for $200,000, I looked at it and I said, well, look, we can either go down to 10,000 or we're at the absolute low, and this is a screaming buy. And I'm going for option B. And so that's why I set up my company in November of 2008, and I started doing these um, seminars and boot camps, telling people, you, you, you gotta buy. This is not gonna get any cheaper, and um, uh, you know, it turned out to be, I guess, pretty good timing because uh, our first boot camp was May of 2009 and we've been doing them, you know, ever since. Yeah. So, well, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, what happens is as you start to, I guess, do more deals, right? The confidence level gets stronger. And then you said you don't want to, even sometimes when you make a decision, or, or basically not making it is better than not making a decision at all. But the interesting thing is when you don't make a decision, you're still making a decision. <laughs> Correct. Right? So no right. decision is still a decision. And yeah. and I agree with you. I believe that even even when you don't know exactly what to do, I mean, one of our mottos for our, our, our company is, you know, less education and more execution, you know? And right. I think that sometimes you can get overlearned on another webinar, another book, another boot camp, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah. how many emails do we get every single day from another real estate guy, you know, saying this is yeah. his way is the best way. I think if you just apply what you already know and get some results, right, you'll get some data. And what I love about what you've done is you're a big data collector. You know, uh, one of the things obviously in our in the Collective Genius Mastermind group that we're both in um, you'll notice too, uh, many people are data collectors. So they get data and they make these decisions based on data. And, you know, that, 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 that starts to help obviously when you have a business and it's running, it's big, but in the beginning, right. I mean, 90% of the people that, that are listening right now, statistically haven't even done their first deal, Lex, right. they've never even right. done their first deal. And so they let all of these other things right? Stop them because they need to make sure that they are perfect. And one of the things we talked about is perfect. Being perfect is an enemy of being productive. Yep. There, there really is no such thing as perfect. It only exists in your mind. It is so subjective uh, to so many different variants. And whenever you're a wholesaler, when you're a real estate investor, you have to take action and know many times that you're going to have less than 50% of all the facts that are necessary in order to hit the, hit the bullseye every single time. But my gosh, throw the dart because you may, you may get close to the bullseye. You may get off the board a little bit, but at least you're, at least you're playing the game. And, right. you know, I think that uh, you, you're also a coach 
And how does that resonate with you when you see uh, your students and they're waiting for their everything to be perfect before they just take that initial piece of action? Well, you know, I think that uh, a couple of things that you pointed out there. Number one, uh, the taking action versus doing nothing. So when you make a decision not to make a decision, you're really making a decision to not have any change in your life and to just be stuck wherever you are. So totally agree. unless you absolutely love your life, hey, if you love your life, you love your job, you love how much money you make, that's great. But if you don't, then you have to take that step. You have to make a change. And that change often is going to be some kind of sacrifice. It could be a monetary sacrifice or it could be a time sacrifice or it could be a combination of both, but it will be a sacrifice. That's where the persistence will come in, you know. So uh, for students, the biggest thing I, I see is that they think, hey, you know, I'm coming. I'm going to get coaching with Lex and Lex is going to teach me all these systems and tools that I can implement to, to be a, a good real estate investor. And, you know, a lot of the tools out there, they, they, they're not like a deep, dark secret. It's not like you can go, oh, no one ever told me about bandit signs before or about direct mail marketing. They're out there. They're tools. People use them. They work. But here's the thing. Are you going to implement them? Are you going to execute on them? Are you going to be persistent with them? Are you going to quit after a month or two? That's the big difference. And for, so for a lot of people with students, I'll sit down with them. I'll say, look, you have all these uh, uh, blockages uh, where you have this p persistent way of thinking that you've thought your whole life. And you have to change your way of thinking because if your way of thinking was right, you wouldn't be sitting here in the session with me. You know, so, so that's – for me, I find like really – that mind shift of getting people to, to turn that switch in their head. That's why books like Think and Grow Rich are so good. And a lot of people read it and they don't really get it the first time. I say, read it again. Understand that you're, you're, you are your own worst enemy. Your, your self-limiting beliefs totally are what's stopping you. Totally agree. You know? totally true. So, you know, the people are in a mindset that they work on a job and make 50000 a year and they want a 2% pay raise and that's their mindset. And if they get that, then they're happy. Or they have a mindset that they want to just pay their bills and not be broke. So they pay their bills and they're not broke. But why not have a mindset of making 500000 a year or $5 million a year? Just, have, just completely shatter that mindset. Change the way you think because um, there, there's so much more out there, you know, that, that, that you're capable of. Absolutely. You know, that I couldn't have said it better. That's great. Most people don't see what their potential is. You know, actually, there's a great word for it. We've said it many times on here. Um, it's called efficacy. You know, and your efficacy is your potential that you don't see in yourself. You know, right. I was talking to someone the other day and they said, you can't see, you can't see the label from the fishbowl or something like that. Basically, you can't see outside of, uh, outside of the world that you're in and you Correct. need to have a different perspective and often, uh, coaching, mentoring, someone that's done it can give you that perspective. And it's like anything else in life. Um, you know, if you're a basketball player, how are you going to get better? One way is practicing like crazy, but another way is talking to someone that's been there and done what you want to do and what, what are ways that they can help you. If you're a golf, uh, golfer and you want to, you know, to, to be the best in the world, right? Then you need to have a coach that shows that swing. You cannot see your swing. You can only see the result, but you need right. to be able to see the swing. In our businesses, that's very important is um, whenever you can see your swing. And in this example, in this context, your, squ your swing may be your mindset. Your swing may be, you know, what, a couple of things that you're a perfectionist and you just need to take action. Your swing may be you don't believe in yourself, which is a mindset thing. Um, sometimes the swing is you don't uh, you're scared of success. What other people are going to think yeah. of you if, you know, if you're this higher st step up than everyone else in your circle. What are they going to think about you? There's a lot of different uh, things that you can, you deal with, right? And we've seen this many, many times. I, I can't, I, I mean, that's totally the same, the same uh, perspective that, that, that what you just mentioned, I, I see a lot. I mm -hmm. think it's crucial that, uh, that, that you get a handle on it and, and take action. Even if it's, you don't know exactly what is uh what's going to happen on the other side of it at least you know that you've taken a step in the right direction right yeah if you had to start over again what is some advice that you give for new folks well i would say the biggest thing is starting with the end in mind as i mentioned to you before i did not really start with the end in mind so i had to kind of like just learn everything by myself and 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 pay as i go and make a lot of mistakes along the way and and you know Things that worked out, I, I did more of, and things that didn't work out, I stopped. 
But what I would say is a better plan of action, especially if you're new and you're thinking about maybe a, you have a goal of uh, maybe quitting your job and learning how to do real estate full time. So what I would do is break it down into a manageable plan. Like let's say you make fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, and your goal is to quit your job and replace that income. Start with that plan, and 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 say, okay, now how can I make that happen? So sixty thousand dollars is twelve flips at five thousand, or whatever that might be, and then break it down to 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 how much you'd need to do per month or per week. And then now that you've got that plan, start saying, okay, so now how am I going to find the house? In other words, break the whole thing down into a system that's workable in numbers that work for you, and then just go out and implement it. And if you do that, you'll see it's not that difficult to do. I, I've got a, a ton of students that are, you know, um, in their mid twenties that were making eleven dollars an hour, and, and now they're flipping houses, making a hundred thousand dollars, and. Um, you just have to have that plan of that end in mind. Right. Right. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, I'm writing down some notes right now. And one of the things that most, I, I, I would, I would you say have a plan in mind. Just because you take action doesn't mean that you don't have a plan. You, you can still have a plan. It just doesn't have to be exactly the way that you thought it was going to be. Uh, in order to have success. Uh, one of the greatest things about this business is you never know who's going to call you, right? You never mm -hmm. know whenever that phone rings, what's going to be on the other end. We were on our way to a trip, uh, you know, and with the kids and we're going to a water park and on the way to the water park, we had our podio ring up and I saw the lead come in. I knew it was a great deal. Our acquisition manager got on it right away. That day they signed it up. And by the time we left the, the water park, which was there for two days, we already had that property sold because we already had a buyer's list and right. we already knew that it was a hot area, right? And you just never know. That happened right. that day, right? And we ended up making a, a very substantial amount of money on that deal. So you never know what's going to happen. So just because you don't have the, the perfect plan laid out, taking a step in the right direction is a part of the plan. Uh, to get to where to get to where you want to go. So, yeah. do you have a do you have a favorite motivational quote or you know? I do actually. I do actually. I have you know. I have these real estate investment club meetings. I run a real estate investment club as well down here in South Florida, and uh, so I give out these little booklets. It's uh, the it's called Zig Ziglar's Little Book of Big Quotes, and I highly recommend I love uh, for those of you out there that you go and uh, take a look at it. But. Um, so that booklet has got a lot of great quotes, but the one that I really like the most is the one where he says, you can get everything in life you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. And, you know, I see a lot of times, especially with new investors, they come to these real estate investor meetings or, or webinars or whatever it might be, and they come only with a mindset of, what can you get me? What can you do for me? And my biggest advice I can say is just stop thinking that way and instead focus on what you can do for them and you will get and learn so much more by, by, by viewing it that way. Absolutely. You know, one of the things we talk about that is the secret to life is serving others. And right. that's what Zig is. I'm such a big fan of Zig Ziglar and it's contrary, right? Isn't it Lex? Like it's contradictory. It, 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 there's a contradiction that happens whenever you think about that. Well, right. how, if I can't even take care of myself per se, what is me helping somebody else going to do? Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And you see it a lot. I see it a lot in the real estate networking things because I've been doing these since like end of 2008. So I think I've had like 105, 106 real estate meetings monthly. And I see these people who show up. They're like realtors, mortgage brokers, and they run around the room shoving their business card in people's hands trying to say, hey, you know, if you need a realtor, call me. Well, no one does business that way. People do business with, with other people that they know, like, and trust. And, they, and if they don't know you and they don't like you and they don't trust you, they're not going to do business with you. So you're better off just meeting one person, not handing them their card, asking them what they do, and then asking how you can help them. And then you'll have them like you. Right. And when you see them at the next meeting, because you're persistent and you show up again and again, you say hi. And then, you know, if it just so happens that you're a mortgage broker and they need that, they'll either call you or they'll refer someone to you. And then if you do a good job, They'll refer more people to you. So um, uh, it's it's really pretty logical if you think about it. But so many people don't do that. They just go with the mindset of here's my card, here's my card. You know, call me, let's do business. And and really in the real world, that very rarely happens. 
Yeah, it's true. I I love the fact that um, Zig Ziglar is a part of your kind of everyday uh, understanding of of success because it is mine too. And I think that uh, that guy is if you if you haven't read anything by Zig, just get on Amazon, type in his name. Heck, get on YouTube and type in his name, and yeah. just go to town with some of the incredible things that uh, that he's put out. Just some amazing. Uh, quotes and some foundational success principles. So yeah. what, uh, what books do you recommend and what's, which one that's really impacted you? Well, there's a lot, I, I read a lot. So there's a lot of books out there that I'd recommend, but I, if I had to say like what book impacted me, I would say Tony Robbins, um, his book awaken the giant within and his book unlimited power. Those two books were something that just really, uh, there was something about them that when I'd finished reading them, they changed the way I thought. They made me think your life, however it is now, can be bigger and better. You know, and that's why I have, uh, you know, I have these things, think bigger, dream big, dream bigger. We put them on at all our events. I have them all over uh, our office. Um, I, I constantly want everyone out there, uh, myself included, to always be thinking bigger, and, and, and imagining uh, a, a bigger business, a more profitable business, uh, um, um, a life of more like the dream that they imagined. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's, it's interesting when you say the dream, you know, they imagined what, when you talk about that, what, what impacted you specifically about that? Was there something in that particular part of the dream that really impacted you? Well, you know, it's like, you know, Henry David Thoreau says pe most people live life of, um, you know, ba basically dreary lives and, and they, 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 um, they, they never like really like a zombie, not being aware and, and alert. Right. Present. He says men, men, most men lead lives of quiet desperation, going to the grave without having, you know, the fight in them or something to that extent. So basically, essentially, most people don't go for it. And if you look at there was this thing I was reading a week ago on a blog, it was posted of a lady in a nursing home. She's talking to people in the 90s and saying, well, what do you most regret? And the, 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 the theme that always came up was love, friendships, family. And then after that, after the obvious, right, because love, friendships, family, fairly obvious. But what came up next was working too much and not going after my dreams, not going for what I wanted and settling. You know, um, and Jim, Jim Carrey's got a great speech where he speaks about his dad and his dad was, you know, always wanted to be a comedian, but he settled for a life of mediocrity being accountant. And at the end of the day, he said, you know, you just got to go for what it is that you want and, and, and um, not settle. You know, don't settle. Don't settle for mediocre life. Regrets, right? I think that's exactly. one yeah. of the biggest uh, parts of our lives that we don't think about, obviously, when you're younger. But as you get older, it starts becoming something a lot more concerning, you know, and the time that you have to accomplish what you want to accomplish. That's why it's so important, you know, if you want to accomplish something, you can absolutely do it in uh, real estate very, very quickly. But you do need to have the tools necessary in order to do that we call it specialized knowledge and right. uh, it isn't anything super um you know rocket science but it is a formula there's a formula what works and having to go and bang your head and recreate the formula and or go and find you know one or two videos and kind of piece them together and how it makes all sense it's great just to get a you know get get a formula that works you know and uh that's what you know, that's what the wholesaling business has done for, for, for you. I know, I know that you've had a lot of success in that. I know your students have had a lot of success. I see again, you popping up all over Facebook and <laughs> online, uh, you know, and, uh, I'm impressed with everything that you've done with your network. I went to your website, uh, that you shared there in the group. It looks, it looks pretty incredible. And, and just having that network that you built has been been awesome. Now you strike me as someone's on the technical side a bit, um, or at least appreciating it. Do you have a favorite mobile app that you use every day? I have a lot of favorite apps, but one that I really like a lot that most people don't use is called Google Photos. Now I have an uh, Apple iPhone, right? So basically, normally people just use the uh, the, the cloud service right. that comes with Apple, right. and I did that for you know the photo stream. I did that for years, but. 
I always had a challenge when people were out in the field. I found that like a lot of our employees had Apple iPhones too. And it was always a challenge getting the people in the field to sync their photos up with the office. So what Google Photos did that was so great is if we give people MiFi cards, they're like these little wireless routers that they can take with them and they can connect to the Wi-Fi. And then as they take pictures, they upload them to Google Photos. And they can, you know, each time they go to a different property, they can take either a, a, a picture of the, the house number or on the mailbox, or sometimes they write it down on a notepad and take a picture of that. So, you know, when they're changing properties and then our staff can drop those into different albums in Google photos and a different team can use those pictures to upload them to the blogs. So it just makes the, the, the picture taking, uh, and getting them up onto the websites that, that much quicker. That's, that's for wholesale. I'm not talking about retail, just for wholesale, but it works real uh, quick. Retail is a whole other ball game. We use a professional photography service for that. But um, uh, Google Photos, to me, is just like an awesome app. And I now find myself organizing it pretty much every day. It syncs up at the end of the day. So even if I'm out, let's say, non-real estate or with my family, my kids or whatever, I can organize trips, whatever, into different albums. And everything's chronologically organized. It's in the cloud. You can never lose it. Uh, you know, so it's an awesome app. That's awesome. So what's the difference between that and Drop, Dropbox per se, right? When you, well, I, I, I sync up to Dropbox as well. And, and, and it's funny you said it because I was going to say if you had a, you know, an, an app that we use for everything really is, is Dropbox. We use Google Drive as well. But sure. Dropbox is just really awesome. We have our entire business uh, in uh, Dropbox folders in the cloud. And uh, that way, if, if we lost a computer or if we lost all the computers, it wouldn't matter because everything's yes, in the cloud. So that's the cloud. Yep. I, I, I view that as indispensable. Like uh, you, you cannot operate without having a cloud based uh, system for storing everything because over time you're going to change computers. You need to have all of your stuff somewhere. I agree 100 you know? percent that or Google Drive. Google Drive's great um, yeah. as well. So pick your pick your poison per se, but that you know that that is uh, something that we use. I mean, I have a yeah. backup my entire life on Dropbox. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so uh, computer goes bad or something like you said, you can just get right back on. Plus the availability of whenever you're not around your computer, just on your phone. I mean, the apps that sync now um, that are just powerful, right? Um, there's a lot yeah. of different other apps that are third party that sync with Google. Uh, yeah. and drive in with with Dropbox, which just makes it super powerful for them. Do you get eight hours of sleep a day? I do every night. I actually find that to be one of the most important things. People don't do that, but I tend to go to bed fairly early. I also wake up very early. I'm up typically around 4 a.m. Wow. Um, and I'm asleep wow. pretty early too. Um, and I find that that morning part of the day for me is the most integral part of the day, you know? So yeah, I get every night eight hours of sleep. That is great. Wow. Okay. So what are you most grateful for then Lex? What are you, what, what in your life just really, you just wake up and you're so grateful for? Uh, well, first of all, will be my two boys. Um, you know, pretty much my life. Um, How and also they? just, they are 15 and 18. 15 and 18. Wow. You get your hands uh, full my yeah. friend, right now. I yeah. have a 15 year old yeah. and 12. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So teenagers can be interesting, you know, so, um, go one driving and the other one about to start driving. But, um, uh, so obviously them, you know, everything, everything I do is for them. But, uh, the other thing that I'm extremely grateful is, is, is for my life, you know, and one of the things that when I first started out in this business and I, I got into rentals, we'd go a lot of times into lower income neighborhoods. And I'd never really been in these kind of neighborhoods before. And when I'd come back home to Boca Raton and I'd say like, wow, we live in a pretty nice place right, right. Uh, compared to where a lot of other people live. And, and then especially when you're a landlord and you deal with seeing people who have a hard time sometimes just making that, their monthly rent, it just makes you realize how really blessed and lucky we all are, you know, so, so I'm, um, every day extremely grateful for, for my family, for my life, for my friends, for my business, for, for just being able to do, uh, what I do for my health, for everything that, you know, that I have. That's awesome. Do you have a morning ritual? I do. I do. Actually, as I mentioned, I start very early. So basically what I try, I do read a lot. I read about three books a week. So, um, what I try and wow, do is every three day. Books a week. I read one yeah. a week for the last three years. I've done that. I've yeah. been, so I can see my audio, uh, you know, audio books that, that I listen yeah. to a lot of books. Uh, what yeah. you listen to, I mean, you read or listen to three books. a I week. I do. I, well, I do both. So when I say I, I read three books a week, I'd say I, I probably read two and listen to one. I, I have uh, Audible 
on my phone. So I download, I have like the, 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 the prime audible membership. Yes. And then I have, um, um, books that I download on the Kindle reader, read them on an iPad. I read them. I pretty much read all the time. But as far as the rituals concerned, the first part of the day I do before I open email, before I even plan my day, what I do is I use a two hour window for learning, specifically for learning. And I find that uh, early in the morning is best because there's completely no disruptions. There's no phone calls. There's no emails. There's no text. So uh, a lot of the stuff that we were speaking about, whether it was capture pages or, or any technology related thing, you know, sometimes you don't always understand how it works when you start out. So you have to go out there. You have to read blogs. You have to, uh, in some cases, I would go and sign up for things. You know, if you want to learn how YouTube videos work, you can go pay a few hundred dollars and subscribe to some kind of training program. And then yes. I just sit and watch those every day. But every day acquire new skill sets that will help me in my business to sell more houses or to get more buyers or to make my website better or whatever it might be. So that's the first part of my ritual, which is the most enjoyable part of my day and also the most sacred part of my day. Mm. And then uh, sometimes inside that will be uh, recordings or, or blog postings or uh, creating training videos for my site. Uh, after that, I typically go for a walk. Um and that's when I often listen to uh, a podcast. I got quite a few podcasts I listen to. I also listen to audio books on uh, Audible. And then after that, uh, grab some breakfast and then start my day. And uh, the first thing I do before I start the day, before I open up that first email, is I plan the day. So I spend 15 minutes with a notebook and a pen, and I write down what the three to five most important things that I need to get accomplished that day. And then I start my day and I make sure that I block out one hour segments of time for me to accomplish those main things so that at the end of the day, I've accomplished those main items that I set out to accomplish. That's great. Yeah, great. I listen to a ton of podcasts, uh, Audible. You know, uh, I think it's so yeah. important to feed your brain and give it stimuli um, and, and, and be in a place of not only just learning because that is crucial – but executing on what you learn. The fastest way to really uh, crystallize something in your life, per se, in your mind, is by teaching it. So if you right. learn something new, right, you learn a new word for the day, you learn a new concept, you learn a new marketing, you need to teach it or do it as soon as humanly possible in order to have that thing really just uh, be impactful to you. Many people right. just learn and they don't do anything, right? So what's interesting is you're such a big executor, um, you know, and the top successful people that I know that run big wholesaling businesses, big fix and flip businesses, even big commercial and, and, and multifamily businesses, they have these execution parameters like just dialed in. Right. I yeah. mean, just just dialed in. Right. So learning's great. But if you got to do something with what you learn uh, and sometimes yeah. those things that you learn are they, they change your mind. Right. They change the way that you think. And maybe that is what you needed. You needed to have something to change that mindset for you. And now you see life differently. Right. And they say that once a brain expands, it can never go back to the same size. So <laughs> I think that, you know, that's a, uh, you know, just a testament to the power of learning. Yeah. Well, and also uh, who you associate with is so important because a lot of people, I mean, if you're not around people, you know, I like to always try and be in a situation where I'm uh, not the smartest person in the room. So in other words, if you surround yourself with, with, with uh, people that are smart and you can always learn from it, then, you know, what blows me away is how smart some people are and how much knowledge some people have. And, and, and you mentioned teaching. What's great about teaching is, is if you want to learn a topic real well, just learn how to teach it. Because when you constantly have students coming to you and asking you questions on every topic imaginable, every website or app imaginable, you, you have to sometimes go out and research things and learn them better. And that's what really makes you a topic expert. And, and you, you mentioned a word that we also say, you said specialized knowledge. Is that what you said? Absolutely. So, um, Right. So basically they say you need to have around 10,000 hours to be a specialist in something. And there's just too many people out there that are not specialists in anything. And I don't care if you're a mortgage broker, a realtor, a contractor, whatever you do for a living, 
here's the thing. If you're going to do it, you might as well do it well, and you might as well be good at it. And the funny thing is if you do it well and you're good at it, you'll probably make a ton of money. So too many people are just mediocre. They, they, they don't invest in their education. Or they don't read. They don't learn their business. Um, and that's why I don't really think that there's a lot of competition in industry per se. To me, the only competition is the five people that are at the top of their game in that industry. That's really your only competition. Only competition. Well, at least that's how I see it. You know, it's interesting. How important has a coach or mentor been important to your success? How, you know, and how, how has that affected you and what you're doing today? Well, I, I wouldn't be here today doing what I do if it wasn't for a bunch of other people along the way that have helped me all the way back to the first guy who was my first mentor. I worked for him for two years. He taught me how to bird dog, how to find deals, how to locate deals for him. He paid me a finder's fee for finding deals and I worked for him for two years. And that's why, you know, a lot of people out there, when I talk about persistence, I say, you know, you think you're going to come to a three-day seminar, you know, take down a couple of notes and you're going to be a wholesaling legend. You know, I went out there from eight in the morning till six at night, six days a week for two years, driving around, knocking on doors of people who are in foreclosure. Hungry, Learn. right? Hungry for it. Yeah. Well, you see, that's the, that's the interesting thing about it is when you, if you, you know, when you've got a one-year-old kid and your wife doesn't work and you're unemployed, that puts you kind of where you don't have a lot of choices. So I, I was very hungry and desperate to, to make this work. And uh, when I met a guy who was who was actually doing this, you know, I read that Carlton Sheets. It was interesting. But when you actually meet a person who's buying houses at the courthouse and fixing them up and selling them and renting them, and, and I would look at that and say, wow, you know, I really need to get to know this guy and I really need to learn what he knows. Right. And the only way I could do that, you know, there's really only two ways you can learn. He told me this. He said you can learn with time. You can learn with money. So you either stroke a check to a coach. Or you do the, you know, the two years of, uh, you know, working as an intern or whatever. There's no real middle ground. So um, the best advice I could give is, is, is if you're serious about doing what it is that you want to do, let's say real estate, the cheapest investment you can make is to pay for a coach. Because the other way, it just takes too long and you might never go where you need to go. And, um, you know, um, uh, I've had a lot of coaches along the way. When I started public speaking, I was I – was, uh, really, uh, let's just say, not thrilled at the idea of standing in the front of a room. Uh, uh, and, and I had to learn how to do that. You know, I had to learn. So I got coaches to teach me how to do that. Um, and I've had coaches every step along the way. And, and I believe that so many of my associates and people that I work with, for example, the mastermind that we're in, uh, every one of these people, I could be sitting at breakfast and they could make one little comment about something. Uh, just like you mentioned a few minutes ago, we were talking about something and I jotted it down. So you're always learning. You know, our brains are like sponges. We can always absorb and we, we, we need to be experts in our field and we need to make sure that we know all of the relevant information that's out there. That's true. If you had to summarize it, why do you do what you do? You know, I think a lot of people ask me that, you know, I, 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 I always say I'm standing at a boot camp in a suit in front of the room. I could be out of my boat, you know, enjoying right, you the have beautiful this incredible boat. By the way, I want you to send a picture so I can put it in the show notes because yeah, everybody's yeah, talking about picture. this boat uh, that, sure. that they want to ride on. And, and you know, yeah. and one of my partners, Sean, he's talking about it. Too. I, I love to check out the boat. I hadn't even seen it. Yeah, so yeah. I loved it. I've been hearing all these things about it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so you're riding I'll, the boat a lot. That's a that's a way for you to I, enjoy life. But what what is I, it? Why I, do you do what you do? So I always say to people, why am I standing here and not, you know, out on the boat this weekend? And the answer is because to me, you know, we can make all the money in the world, flipping houses, fixing, flipping, renting, and that's all fine and dandy. I mean, there's only so many fillets you can eat, you know, in my case, maybe one too many. But the thing is, is that <laughs> it's fish. But, <laughs> but the thing is, is that at the end of the day, you can't take it with you. You know, uh, you have to, uh, you know, I look at my life and say, well, what impact will I have? And, and really, the only impact you can have is on your children and on other people. And so um, for me, Every time I have a student, and it might not be a lot of students, I could have 80 people in a boot camp and maybe there's only five or 10 people in that room that I have the ability to make some kind of change in their thinking that can change their life. Right. And I say to myself, if there's just one person in that room whose life changes because of coming to my event, then it makes all of that worthwhile. And so just looking back at some of the 
students I've worked with over the past 10 years and some of the amazing, phenomenal successes that they've had that are beyond uh, what I could have imagined. You know, I've got some, I've got one student who's got $3 million worth of rental properties and he started in real estate three and a half years ago. Um, I got one guy flipping $4 million homes on the intracoastal who started five years ago, you know, so, so some, some, some people have done phenomenally well and that's what really, uh, um, uh, keeps me going and, and, and makes it all worthwhile. I love that, man. That's great. Well, yeah. how can we serve you, Lex? What can we do to, you know, help you? And also how's the best, what's the best way to get into contact with you? Well, as far as how you can help me, the best way you can help me is by, by for those of you that are listening, uh, is to help yourself by taking the time to really look at your life and ask yourself if you are where you want to be. And if you're not, then implement some change to change that. Uh, find a coach or do whatever it takes to take your life to uh, another level. And if you do, if you, if you have the courage to do that, you will have way more success than you could ever imagine. So that would be my, um, you know, what I'd like to see uh, people doing. Um, as far as uh, how to reach me, uh, my website is lexlevenrad.com. Can you spell that, Lex? And yeah, sure. L E X L E V I N R A D dot com. And, um, you know, look me up. I'm around, as you say, I'm, you know, I'm online. I'm, 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 I'm all over the place and, um, I'd love to help in any way. Great. That sounds great. I appreciate you taking the time to be on here. It's been awesome. Great things shared. And I'm going to put a lot of things in the show notes, including, a picture of your boat if you'll send it to me. <laughs> Maybe somebody okay, will put it on their vision good. wall. <laughs> but, uh, I okay, appreciate awesome. you. I appreciate you taking uh, the time, Lex. You. And, uh, you know, it's just incredible what success that you've built and how you're doing it. It's you're, you're, you're really running a machine out there to do that many projects and really to knock down that many deals. It is very, very impressive. So I highly recommend you go check out um, Lex on his website, and check out the show notes here when if you're just listening and you haven't got a chance to uh, see some of the things we talked about if you forgot them just we'll put all those things down here in the show notes for you so all right lex appreciate you well thank you thank you Corey. thanks for having me so much and hey all of you guys out there that are watching this you know do something take action right don't just sit back think about it implement that change uh once again Corey, thank you so much for having me awesome man thank you well make sure uh, you're on the next uh real estate profit masters podcast series we're going to bring another incredible interview your way so thanks again remember be a servant we'll talk to you soon bye now hi this is Corey boatwright and i have a quick question for you what is the fastest way to reach your goals is it to work harder work smarter use system and processes or hire rock star employees what about just making more money you know actually it's none of that those things are a byproduct of the one success component that every real estate investor or business owner that i know all have in common and the answer is clarity complete laser focus on what you want why you want it and what are you willing to do to get it so where do you find clarity? By hiring a coach and mentor. Now, could you reach the level of success that you want to achieve by doing this all on your own? You know, the Lone Ranger. Well, maybe, but do you think it would take you double or even triple the time to achieve it compared to hiring a coach and mentor to help guide your path, provide proven instruction with a tailored blueprint that you could follow for building a real estate business that supports your lifestyle and helps you reach your financial and personal goals? Absolutely. Here's the fact. Time isn't recyclable. So I would like to ask you to make good use of it and extend a personal invitation for you to book a phone coaching strategy session by going to callwithcory.com. That's callwithcory, Corey spelled C-O-R-Y, dot com. I'm going to ask you a few quick questions on that page, and we're going to go over and see how we can make sure that your business is on path to reach the goals that you want this year. So go to callwithcory.com, that's C-O-R-Y, and book your phone coaching strategy session 
today. Remember, be a servant, and I'll see you on there. You've been listening to another Real Estate Investing Profits Master Podcast Series. To receive your free real estate book, Down and Dirty, Ultimate Real Estate Investing Quick Start Guide, How to Quit Your Job to Start Flipping Houses in 90 Days or Less, head online and go to realestateinvestingprofits.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash real estate investing profits. Thanks again for listening and stay tuned for our next episode.